All right, we're here with Chris, and you guys have a new mouse. You guys always have a new mouse. This is the new new mouse, this right? Is the newest. This is two or three days old at this point. I don't remember what day it is. Um, so this is our G502 Proteus Core tunable gaming mouse. Uh, tunability is really the idea that gamers need a product that will work exactly the way they want it to and work precisely for them. So we've added a bunch of diff different features that allow them to do that. The biggest of which is we have our new, uh, brand new sensor that we developed from the ground up. Uh, and it's got a surface tuning feature which allows you to tune the sensor to the exact perfect performance characteristics of the surface that you're using. So rather than having to use a single individual kind of default setting, which has good performance across a wide range of surfaces, but doesn't have necessarily great performance on the surface that you're using, you can make it work exceptionally well on the, on the surface that you have. Second thing it has is weight and balance tuning. So, uh, we've had weight tuning before, which allows you to put weights into the mouse and make it heavier if you want it to be. But the way that that works is you put them in a little cartridge and then you slot it into the mouse and it would put all the weight concentrated in one area and it would raise the center of gravity of the mouse as well. So we've added uh, balance tuning to it. We've got five 3.6 gram weights that you can put in it to make it weigh up to 18 grams more. And you can put them in in any orientation that you want. So if you want it to weigh heavier at the back or heavier at the front, you can change the balance of the mouse to where you hold it and how you use the product. The uh, weight door is held on with an awesome magnet. All magnets are awesome, but this one's more awesome. Especially designed awesomeness magnet. Yes, yeah, yeah we, Plus we, four. we got, <laughs> it's, we, there's a set bonus with the weights. <laughs> um, it's got 11 programmable buttons, so you can tune those to be pretty much anything you want. So individual key strokes, multi-key macros, uh, and those are saved into one of three profiles on the mouse. Or we've got our automatic game detection mode, which allows you to uh, make individual profiles for every game that you have. We've got 283 games in our profile list right now, and uh, we're adding more all the time. Uh, here you guys see you guys are sticking with the you know, different sized buttons so they're easy to feel. Something you guys have done with a few, a few different mics in the past. Exactly. You know, we want to make all of the controls accessible, but not in your way. Uh, so you can hold the mouse comfortably, even if you've got a gigantic hand like mine. You can hold the mouse comfortably, but easily reach all the buttons. All right. Now you mentioned uh, that you guys designed a custom sensor for this. Is this based on any other sensor? Is it based on a Avago, or I guess they're not Avago anymore? But is it based on like the 9800, uh, ADNS 9800, or anything like that? It's a totally brand new sensor that nobody else is using. It's uh, illuminated by illuminated by an infrared LED. It's not. Uh, a laser illuminated or a red LED illuminated sensor. So we got optical uh, technology here. So even laser sensors are optical, and not right, not right, to get yeah. too pedantic, right. but but they're they're mostly based on CMOS technology, and you bounce a laser or an LED off of the surface, and you read what the 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 um, read what the surface characteristics are. Look at the the, the different uh, uh, microscopic characteristics of the surface, and they compare the images to each other, you know, in order to tell which way you're going. So. Whether it's laser or LED based, it's optical. But in if you want to say laser versus optical, this is more this is an LED based sensor. So infrared. In, yeah. In the enthusiast community, yeah. they've adopted the terms laser and optical, and it's not that I don't understand what that means, and I, right. I don't want to you know be I'm not trying to uh, I, to dance around the answer. In in the enthusiast parlance, it is optical, uh, but it's it's. Uh, I, I, I want to, you know. Well, this is the further clarification edu that we need. Let's try to be educational. Yeah. Now, what was the uh, the CPI slash DPI on this one? I've, I've so it already. it uh, goes from 200 to 12,000 native. So every every 50 steps, or sorry, it'll, it'll go 50 DPI steps from 200 to 12,000. Uh, it has zero smoothing. It's got zero pixel rounding. So you're not getting any um, uh, latency added from calculation of the of the DPI. It's actually native to the sensor. You get identical uh, tracking performance whether you're at a low DPI level or a high DPI level. And there's no sacrifice made in the performance of the tracking uh, in order to uh, get to the high DPI level. Basically, we designed it around being the the most responsive gaming sensor that you can get, uh, and then push it to see how far up the CPI could go. All right, so uh, when's this available, and what's the uh, MSRP? So we announced it on the 8th. It's uh, available for pre-order on our website right now. Uh, you can find it in retail stores all around. The country is starting to move uh, uh, more into retail. Uh, it's $79.99, and uh, if you want more information about it, you can find it at gaming.logitech.com. Cool. Come and try out the sensor. We found Charles at the Logitech booth uh, in a kilt, of all things. Killer in a kilt, man. It's the, the ladies love it. I'm sorry. What can I say, man? It's so uh, what do we have here? So this is a Logic PowerShell controller plus battery. If you've ever played a mobile game, 
you've gone, okay, you know, you're playing and then your thumb will slip off the screen, you won't be able to press a button, or there's just some games that are just better with the gamepad, especially, you know, the great ports, like you have Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you know, is you need more functionality than the touchscreen can usually provide. So we worked with Apple. This is a based on Apple specification. So it actually has native iOS 7 support. So there is no special development anyone has to do. They use the Apple Developer Kit to include support for this. It is native and included in the operating system. And all you have to do is have a iPhone 5, 5S, or a iPod Touch 5th Gen. It simply connects into the Lightning connector right here. You push it in place. Let me go ahead and turn the iPod back on and start the game again. Voila, you have a fully functional gamepad where you can get all the normal enjoyment that you get out of a game, but you have the full D-pad, you have the full button face, you have dual, these are also analog inputs, these shoulder buttons right here, you can have a variable control of programming by the game, and you also have 1500 milliamp, uh, 1500 milliamp hour battery, which basically doubles the battery life of your iPhone. Now, are you guys planning on uh, doing anything like this for Android? I know the Android market is, there's too many you know, devices out there, but is there, you know, any possibility of getting this on Android? At this moment, I cannot confirm or deny anything. But uh, what it is, is what makes this awesome is that this is actually built around the shape that Apple has. Apple has a very distinctive shape and size, so we're able to engineer the iPhone or the iPod Touch to fit directly within this device. That is the advantage of this function, uh, this feature. Nice. It could be uh, good for uh, ROMs as well, but you guys probably don't sanction that, right? No, I can't. Uh, if you're going to run ROMs on an iPhone, you kind of need to jailbreak it. So that falls into a weird gray territory. I'm not going to touch. But uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be the I'll be the I'll be the yeah, one yeah, to uh, yeah. say go ahead and do that. It'd be awesome, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, Logitech does not not uh, endorse or condone my activity. I, I would like to say. Even without the ability to do all these awesome third-party things that I can't talk about, you have great games like Limbo. I don't know if you haven't if you haven't played Limbo yet, go get it now. It is one of the most hauntingly awesome side-scrolling adventures you can play. There's also Bastion. There's Grand Theft Auto. There's side-scroller shooters. There's Final Fantasy III. There are so many great games available right now. They just immediately start playing just by plugging it in. There's nothing you need to do to get it to start working. So this is a nifty little feature. We don't really technically advertise this. But you, you, I'm sure, as an iPhone user, you may have run out of power, and everyone around you has that USB micro connector, and you need that lightning connector. You can use this gamepad and just plug in and charge your iPhone with a USB micro connector, which is super nice if you travel a lot, or if you're out with friends a lot, and they tend not to have iPhones, you just plug in here and you're set. I like it, so you're going through the battery that's in there, right? So exactly. So the battery, then charging the, yes. yes. You have, you have full functionality of all the iPhone buttons, so you can actually press the lock button by hitting the switch right here. You have volume control and the home button, and you can also talk while using it. So if you get a phone call, you, it does look a little bit longer than your typical iPhone, but you can play interrupted, uninterrupted. Nice. Well, if you guys make one for Android, I'll be first in line. I'm just not an iOS guy, but I know yeah. we've got a lot of them in the community, and they're out there. Exactly. No, it's, there are advantages to both platforms. I have both platforms. Uh, so, but I get to be platform agnostic. It's part of the job. I got to know everything. So, you know, if I have to have an iPhone and a Nexus, you know, this life's good. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I know. Curse me. All right, so let's go take a look at Star Citizen, shall Excellent. we? Excellent, yeah. I'm here with Mark, and you guys have uh, Star Citizen on display. You guys like the only people here with Star Citizen? Yes, we are. We, we, we're really pleased to have them demoing the dogfighting module of Star Citizen first time anywhere. So they had their, they had their opening party for, party for backers Thursday night to unrail it. And now it's running here in our booth. It's the only place you can play it right now. So it's pretty exciting. This is pre-alpha, and if you know things about Star Citizen, you know it's a cloud crowdsourced game through Kickstarter by Chris Roberts, who does the Wingman guy. You know, it's and they're looking at this pers pers persistent space world with combat and economy and everything, which would be awesome. So we've got that here. Um, it's running one of the dogfight modules. This is a I think all survival mode. So every time you kill one of your enemies. They throw more at it, they get faster, they get smarter. And the farthest I've seen anybody gets seven levels up so far. Have you had some time to uh, actually play it yourself? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of fun. And did you, uh, have you played like a, a lot of dogfighting games or space sims in, in the past? Yeah, yeah I'm, the, I'm the joystick manager for Logitech. Yeah. I've been playing everything since, so far back it's scary, but Falcon 3, um, X-Wing, right. Wingman, all this stuff. And this is the best one I've seen so far. I mean, really? I mean better than TIE Fighter and everything? Oh, yeah, because this is like, what, what needed to happen is like we need to get the next level, bring the level of quality of models and graphics 
and just experience up to the modern you know level that we're seeing with the other games so now we got a, a, a truly state-of-the-art space shooter now you're a backer on this obviously right yeah i got I have two ships in my garage i've been walking around i've been climbing in them and i can't wait for the hangar door to open so today this it's been fun for me here to just be able to fly them finally what's your uh, favorite ship um I have the, the, I have the Anvil, the stealth model Anvil, I forget the name, yeah. the little fighter. I have one of those, and then I have a sort of a exploration slash cargo ship. Because mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to go big ship yet. I want to fly the small stuff. Maybe and a little smuggling I, or something? Yeah. Maybe, you know, I'm not a, a carrier guy, so yeah. I'll fly planes on somebody else's carrier. <laughs> if you're in the game uh, and gamers see you, what's, what's your handle going to be? My, my handle, like everywhere, is Spectre Labs. Spectre Labs. Yeah, it's awesome. a long story, but yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate cool. it. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you. In this video, you can win a white PV100 power bank. This will charge most phones two times, and, um, and it's also 2.1 amp for uh, fast charging. So good luck to you guys. Click on the bottom of the screen and enter the contest. Do it, guys. Come on.